Good afternoon. Welcome to Obina Show Live. Asante sana kwa kukua nasi. Samahani kidogo, tumechelewa kidogo, lakini sasa tupo live, na tupo site. We are at Miale 72 Lounge in Lovington. Best place to come and chill out. Privacy guaranteed. Parking free. Car wash on site. And their meals are also very amazing and affordable. That's why we love being here. Today's episode, I'm hosting one of the people that I've looked up to for a long, long time. And finally, tunakutananga, tunasalimia na, tunafanya kazi, lakini leo ni maswali. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for the first time ever on Obina TV and Obina Show Live, Boniface Mwangi. Ngaji, bro. The activist. Yes. Politician. Uh -huh. Father. Ndiyo. Husband. Hoka. Hoka. <laughs> Mogoda. Mwagiwa Mogoda. Mwagiwa Mogoda. Mwagiwa Mogoda. Yes. Mambo. Kwa sana bro. Asante so much for coming through. Thank you for having me. When I was me. reaching out, you know, I thought you'd say no. Because I stopped doing interviews. Yeah. But now I have an agenda. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, when you see anybody sit in front of a camera. Equal agenda. Equal agenda. And it must agenda. It must agenda nicely. Karibu. Asante sana. I've seen Unauza Mashamba. Yes, sir. That's, that's dope. I'm trying to make a living, honest However, living. However, yes. <laughs> <laughs> However, bring it. We have a lot of people who are thinking Bonia may change. Uh huh. Yes, we have a lot of people who knew you as Mutalikwa na pigania. Yes. So you manza kuji pigania. What about that? Traitor! 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 So now people are saying you have a price. I do. You have a price. Name it. No, you're telling me. I don't know. People are saying. So I'm asking, do you think you have a price? What price now? So, all my life I've worked. Yes. I, when I was an activist, I'm still an activist. I was a photographer. Okay. I ran a photo studio. Okay. I, I sell books. Okay. I have a shoe shop. I just sell things because I must earn an honest living. If I don't okay. do that, I'm in Nairobi. How do you think I, sh I should pay my rent? Because what do I say? I sell out. Yes. And they don't pay me to fight for them. So I have to work because I have, to, I have bills to pay. <laughs> We will get to that conversation so, in a little no, while. Took on a receipt. <laughs> Drop them. <laughs> ah, bring it on. We got receipts. I was born for this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you, you, were you born a fighter? Yes, I was born a fighter. I went to jail when I was 11 years old for the first time. You went to jail when you were 11? Yes. Why? Niko approved school. Niko na sumbua wazazi. What happened? I was arrested in the streets. I ran away from home. I became a street boy. I was arrested, I was taken to court, I was jailed for seven years for rehabilitation and care. Then Kafkuzo approved school. I was expelled. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Approved school is the last resort. Una expelliwa approved school. Well, it's my mimi in Sumboa. I exposed what they were doing. Were, kids were being molested. Oh. They were using uh, the because we were all inmates. So they're using the inmates to farm the teachers' farms and do manual work. Okay. You become a slave to sl you to slavery. You slave camp. You can a minister. You can expose. Then you can expose. Aje. That's how I began my photography journey. I took pictures. I was about 14. I took them to the minister for home affairs, Sharif okay. Nasil. Okay. Instead of them using the pictures to investigate, they used them to expel me from the school. Wow. So nothing really happened? Ah, nothing, nothing changed, actually. When in that school, someone tried to molest you? <laughs> no. But we were not I was not to molest you. I was not But, interestingly enough, when I was in a crude school, they used to be called softy. Because everyone there was tougher than me. But I was smarter than everyone else. So, you were tough. I was not going to be able to get a lot of money. I was not going to be So, I had a bit of respect. Because I was okay. smarter than all of them. I was also street smart. Okay. Yeah. So you got place to Ilianza. So you got expelled to Kenda? You got Kwahoka. You know me, I never went to high school. Hi, Boni. You know me, I used to think graduate ni 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 ni. Graduate Ghani. <laughs> <laughs> For real? Yeah, but eventually I went to journalism school when I was in my 20s to study photojournalism. Okay. But I never went to high school. Because when I was kicked out of approved school at the age of 14, that was the end of my secondary education. Woka ingia, ulikuna hoki nini? Vitabu kwa barabara, ni mahoku vitabu hii Nairobi, teddy bears, magazine kwa crusade za pastor pismiru, well, flowers. Wait. You know, when my mother died, actually, the only thing that I inherited from my, my mother was a bed, a six hand bed, in a, in a single room, in a rent arrears. So I was on my own. Likuachia <laughs> madeni. <laughs> you are the only child? No, we are 
six of us. Okay. Maybe seven because one of them alipoteanga. Okay. Uh, yeah. I wasn't one of them. <laughs> one of us. One of us. It's, yeah. Okay. One. Of, so you in all your siblings when you kichwangumu. Uh, Rama, you are the black sheep of the family. Let's put it like that. I was the black sheep for the longest time. Yeah. But right now, I'm the financial of the family. <laughs> <laughs> man, nigga, man. Okay, okay. 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 Yeah. I remember my family. I'm the only one who's now bailing everybody. You're like, you guys, I thought I was the evil and one. When, yeah, when I was young, I was the one they used to. They you know, would not allow, example. They don't even allow me into their homes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. went to school. Ukatoka. Mbonu li end approved school? Ulifukuzo ishule ngine pia? No, li toroka ishule. Ukakua chokora? Eh. Wakasema approved school. Yeah. Ukatoka approved school, ukakua hoka. During this time, mom was alive. So, my mother died when I was 17. Okay, before I reached okay. 18. So I back myself in this world, me against the world. Dad? My dad is a deadbeat, but he's, he's somewhere. Because by the time I was being born, they yeah. were already separated. Okay. Yeah. So during this time when you're in improved school doing all this thing, how did mom take it though? Uh, my mother was even, because my mother loved me so much. And okay. She gave me the, the opportunity to actually learn. Uh, my mother is the one who bought me my first camera to go and take pictures in that school that got me expelled. So they used to tell her, he does whatever he wants. But what I used to do when I was with my mom, I used to love reading. Okay. And my mother never used to interact with me when I'm reading. So she gave me that opportunity. So by me selling books, by the batch of me selling books, I was able to read a lot. Na so much talk. Kwa na so much talk. Lindsay, idea sana. It makes an idea, true. Nika kwa youth pastor in my... Yes, hey, I bro. Okay. Nika kwa Bible school. Nika kwa Bible school. From a school to a pastor. Uh, youth, you can get youth ministry. Then you can get photojournalism. Wow. Okay. Okay. You know there are people who have not watched the movie Softy, Softy. Yeah. so they don't know some of the stories that we're gonna be discussing today. Mm -hmm. So we'll just take them real, uh, real uh, through it real fast. Like for example, you came, you started photography. So it was how did you start photography? So it was uh, yeah. from approved school with the camera and everything. But since then, you always just love photography. Yeah, I love photography. Actually, that's how I earn my living. So okay. one of the things that I do, I have corporate clients and NGOs that I shoot for. Okay. They still take pictures. I saw you had another meeting and uh, you are with, was it Nate? Yes. And oh, yeah, the photographer was Grace late. Michelle, yes. Yes, you're just like, yo, bro. <laughs> Let's <have> roll. <laughs> <laughs> so he also loves photography. My son loves photography, yeah. Okay. And I think I'm the only photographer in the family because my firstborn is now Nate, yeah. who wants to become a footballer. Okay. Second born is Naila, my daughter. Yeah. She wants to become a DJ. Then Jabu. Then uh, Jabu, yeah. <laughs> Jabu, yeah, Kutu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Soft life. Flow. But, but and, and <laughs> yeah, soft tea. Yeah. 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 And, uh, king of soft life. And I'm a chef. Oh. So he's the one who bakes in the house a lot. Uh -huh. yeah. Nice, nice. So, fast forward. A lot of people knew you around 207? 207 to 8, yeah. 207 to 8 after post election violence? Yes. Post election violence, you can't wapi. You can't Uruma. Okay, H-Town. When Kibaki was announced on 30th December, yeah. I was in Huruma, Geto Uko. Uko chini, madare pale kwa, kwa muto. Yeah. And the moment it was announced, nyuma zikanya kuungua. Immediately. Immediately, nato kato kato mapanga. That's it, that's it started. Ulikuwa na camera? I, a, I was working for the standard. Okay. Yeah. So, kasema tuende tuna kazi? Chapa kazi for two months. So, from between... 30th December till Feb 28 when they, they sent the peace accord between when Rela and Kibaki met. It was two months of mayhem every day. You live to see it every day. Document it. I would document it every single day. I would go to the newsroom. Namonda Kibira. Ngia, Ngia Madare. So, we have to take it. Say things have changed actually, but because nowadays when guys go to go cover events, they get robbed. Yes. yes they Back do. in the day, it was very rare to get robbed. People saw you as uh, their hope, yeah. and yeah, and they're saying well, the reason why you're protesting is because the election has been stolen. Yeah. And if you if you document, people will know the entire world will know you're protesting. Yeah. So they see you as a value to the community. They don't see you as an enemy. Today, when you go to the community, the people see you. They're, they're goons. The police don't want to see you. No one wants to see you.
Mm. So it's harder right now for a photographer than it was for me those years. Okay. Is there a day that you had gone to cover for Postulation of Violence that you nearly died or something? A couple of times. There's one time guys got trapped and one of our friends was grazed with a bullet. Uh, there's another time I was with a friend of mine, who was my boss actually, uh, Jacob Otieno. Yeah. And he, and he used to call me Mwangi. Then he called me Mwangi. At the wrong place. At the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. we stood still because I used to tell guys, Mimi ni mtaita. I was born to Tata Beta. Okay. So when I used to go to Mwangi, when you went to Kablagani, Mimi ni mtaita. So there's no, they can't yeah, place uko, you anywhere. Yeah, uko yeah. Too. yeah. Kidogo Jacob Akachoma. And I'm going to take him out. Hey, Mwangi, hey, Mwangi, hey. And then, quiet. Yo. Like, wait a minute. But there's a guy, like, there's no I was able to cover Kibira very well. There's a, there's a photographer. He's now a photographer. Okay. He became my, I employed him. I taught him how to take pictures. He works for AP. Brani Ganga. Okay. He's only used to help me get access in, Kib in Kibira. Yeah. Then in Madare, there's a guy called Elijah Kanyi. Who was born in Madare. Kwa nipati akseso, unakona mse local. Mse local, unakona mse local. Tuende hivi. Tuende hivi, yeah. Oh, Wow. Because your photos after postulation violence, I remember there's a time I was in town. This time I still had not known you. Nika patu meziweka pale tao. Ulikuwa na endangu na zipanga, na zipanga. Look at them. Picha mtani. Yes. Mm. Yes, I am. Yeah, that was it. Mm. I was like, this guy, I mean, why is the picture I'm a download? Look at the guys in Guinea Kidogo. So, post-election violence happened. You covered the whole thing. Would you say this was your turning point in your career? This is the thing that now defined... It's the thing that made me quit my job. Okay. I was employed by the standard, by the time I was quitting. That's 208. I was one of the best paid photographers. My salary was 90,000. That's 2008. 90? 208 <laughs> 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 90. <laughs> 90K. Now, you know, I'm 20. But I was one of the best photographers. So I quit my job to try and do, because the violence traumatized me. And I thought I could change the country by showing them the pictures and getting people to engage about those things. Okay. So I resigned from my job. I was newly married. I had a pregnant woman. And I got two cars. Because, I was a kid. I was a kid. I was a kid. I was a kid. So, yeah. I was a kid. We are getting into that. Light skin. So, I'm going to tell you about the WhatsApp group. I'm going to tell you about the WhatsApp group. I'm a joint show. Was stream, was stream live. Yeah. So during this time, everything was happening. You and Jerry was beginning. Yeah. So I got married actually. When they sent the piece of code, February 28, 2008, I got married on March 8, 2008. Lingia marriage not trauma, postulation violence, stress. It was. You know, people always think that you, you are this hardcore dude, that when you took everything, the pictures, what you've been through, you've never been traumatized. Me, trust me, I couldn't watch all those pictures. I used to look at them, and I'm like, ah. Father, me, if I see a sight of blood or tears, I also start tearing. I don't know why. <laughs> I always just, I have that, I'm like, no. Yeah. Blood and myself, mm-mm. I don't I know, I know, it happens. <laughs> yeah. So during this time, this thing actually traumatized you. I lived in a lot of trauma, actually. And, and I think I have a lot of trauma. One of the things, uh, the other day, someone had been arrested, actually over the weekend. Yeah. And I left the house to go and get them released. So in one, I can get two people, three people released. They make phone calls or show up. And I realize police traumatize me. There's a way I see the police and then my body reacts. And it reacts in a, such a defensive way. I have police officers who are friends. During COVID, I used to go and drink in police stations. What does she kill police station? But at the same time, because she Choko is a military. Choko is a kilimani. I'm on a kile. I'm on a get to on a cartoon. Dad, on a sema to pay when I'm a carao. I'm bending down your body. Kujira gava. Munishike muone. No, but on a serious note, yeah. there's a there's a level of trauma that you live with. Yeah. If you ask some of the guys that you grew up with when you were young, you grew up in the era of moi. Wakati wa moi, ulikuwa usitembea bila ID. Right now, things are better. Yeah. Ulikuwa usiku kipadana na karawa na kulizo umetoka wapi kijana. Wewe ni umbo wa polisi mama laya. <laughs> no, no, no. Kwa sema, the only people na fokutembe usiku, yeah. ni umbo, yeah. muizi, malaya, 
ama polisi wewe ni gani hapo chagua <laughs> chagua mm. unasema wewe oh, ofisa wewe oh, nimetoka kazi kwa hiyo kitambulisho unatoa ID yako na mboi kwa ya kazi kama una ya kazi hiyo ni shida because if you don't have you're going to give them money it was just bad those are the days where you could go to the police station you are locked up there was no the 24 hour rule you know today now this is 24 hour rule yeah, those days a police officer could arrest you and put you in a cell for a month katu hadi family yako itoedo you have come from very dark days so from the, all that trauma of growing up in islands every time i see cops just give me jitters you know that they i'm not scared of them i'm not scared of anything or anyone but just there is a body trauma to nile tu eh nile tu venye unaona kama kuna kitu shafanyika kwa mtu hii unaona ina you relieve it all over again okay yeah. have you seeked any professional uh, therapy is important therapy. bro oh i'm going for therapy like seriously last year okay. therapy is very important. actually therapy has given me clarity because when, what happens when you go to a therapist you, you're sharing your life with a stranger they're not invested in your story they want to give you guidance they don't even tell you what to do they help you with your story and they clarify your thoughts to so level you come to a conclusion so they don't tell you this is the way but by engaging and they can see a pattern they can see there's a pattern between your child when you're a young adult so now you're married there's a pattern then they tell you hapa ndio kuna angalia tu angalia decide so i think if should go for therapy i think our parents if our parents went for therapy they'd be better people <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Ongea na mtu. Ajui, hizo wa parents they were waiting for therapy. Yeah, hata wanaume wanagi therapy. Therapy ni, ni pombe na wanawake. I know. <laughs> <laughs> therapy is important. It's therapeutic. <laughs> for how long? Unalea unasema kidogo ya shida. And then when you are when you're drunk you speak your mind. Eh unasema then, then when you're sober you're like Eh hey, dali choma. Uko choma your heart you your heart. Yes. It was your week. So imagine okay. doing that with, when you're sober with someone who knows what they're doing. Okay. Yeah. Wanaume mmesikia tuingie therapy. Therapy is important. Where did you meet Jerry? Wow. Muli kutana wapi? Steers in the Bingo Street. Where we? I used to ride. Nakula kuku. Ah, I used to ride those days. I one of those few guys in this country had had like a hot sports bike. 206. Ulikuwa na motorbike sports, sports bike. Motorbike, Honda 50, yeah. 206. 206, bro. Bro, uh-huh. I'm 40. Mimi mzee. I was 24 then. So I no I was 23 when I met Jerry. Likwa alikuwa steers on a bigger story. She was going to Mavuno church. Okay. The series in the church was sex and sex in the city. That was the topic of the summer at Mavuno. Okay. It was a new church then. So when they sat and they were having this argument, they were having a debate about sex in the city. I listened to her speak and how she argued about she said that's my wife. Sapio sexual. Hey, hapo <laughs> I fell in love with her brains. She's beautiful. Uliku meka nyuma yao makando yao. Nikwambia mimi simama tu, I'd gone to see a friend of mine. Kaskia ki drop points. Eh, hey, nikaka hapo. Then it took me a month to get her number because now Bisema alikuwa anajaribu kumkatia. So it kwa leave hey, it. Hey, hey, hey. Competition. Ya kuna compare. Eh, ile tatu best yangu nikamwambia ni ajule dem. So nge namba yake nimpige picha ya pulse. You know those days was the pulse photographer. Wait, wait, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so. Bisema kwambia relax. Can I can get number? We met and we've been together since then. So we meet where like how did you the first date we went to get a movie then we spoke the entire night. Kwa gate hapo tu kwa gate kwa shiburu. Melale tu gate hapo. Wajoma de maburu na hizo magate zao. Naweza au naishi wapi? Nilikuwa naishi Jabavu Road. Nilikuwa naishi kwa hapa tu Halingam. Oh, Halingam. Kwa SQ. Uh-huh. Mm. So all the way to Buru na bike yako. Eh. Yeah. Unapiga story tu. Limbeba Joshua screaming her heart out. Just as I'm back in Nairobi, guko na boda boda, boda boda came like came later yeah, so so the bikes were few and then those days motorists used to respect motorbikes. Okay. Because yeah. in this not like now. The Even, whole night we uko like that's my wife yeah. No, that's the story no no. The story she said no we can't be together. You are far too gone you know to do the life. I'm busy kaza mkatia mwanzi letu another we still together where where so many years now 17 years yo i see what you do with your family and you inspire me a lot Same. and i see what you do with your kids mm-hmm. and there's a time i reached out to you uh-huh. i wanted you to guide me on how to have certain conversations with my kids <laughs> and strangely enough i had another one three days ago with the girls mm. about pads 
in mm. periods and they, Ada just told me that we need parts. I'm like, yo. <laughs> 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 yes. So I was looking for you because I see the way you, you speak about everything. There's yeah. another day you're talking with uh, um, Naila. With Naila. I think it was Jabu or Nate. Someone said, see, Naila is on a period. See, what, 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 what? I was like, yo. She's PMSing. <laughs> yes, she's PMSing. I'm like, And then they're just throwing a joke, yeah? No. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, hey, these kids are very woke. It's about talking about openly. So one of the things that we haven't done, or rather never happened to us, our parents never told us about sex. Yeah. And many of these things. So you find that kids end up getting either abused or things happen to them that they're not supposed to, that they're not supposed to happen to them. So one of the things that we did very early when our kids were young, the moment they could wash themselves, they understood that their private parts are private. And that's why no one should touch them. And all these things. Yeah. So you tell, you tell them about boundaries. I remember when my daughter was young, someone tried to kiss her. Like one of my, you know, like the people can come and then try to, the, 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 Nella said, no, that's very yucky. Don't do that. So you see kids know boundaries. Yeah. So and even when they go to school or in the place where people are doing appropriate things, they know what they're not supposed to do. The other thing is that let, let your kids see you loving their mother or their mother loving their husband to a level where they're going to have, they don't feel they are, they are simping if they show it openly. Oh, okay. So it's, there's a need for that. People should learn how to be told that I love you and you love me. We kiss our kids every day. And the chick, every single day. We say I love you every day in our house. Yeah. So when you go out there one day and in a relationship, if they don't feel loved, they'll know they're not loved. They know this is wrong. This is wrong, yeah. Have they seen you guys have a moment with YK? Like have sex? No, no, no. Oh. no, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, no, well, like Kukosana. Uh, yes, they have seen us. So one of the things we do, in, we use Kukosana. We have even argued in the car in front of the kids. Yeah. But we don't shout at each other. And we're not violent to each other. So they'll tell you, like when the kids fight in our house, we tell them, why are you fighting? Have you ever seen me and your mother fight? So the, we, we, are, we, have to, we have learned to play, to fight fair. We have never fought in our marriage, like physically. Yeah. We don't insult each other. So you can raise your voice, but then you're told, why are you shouting? Then you lower your voice. So there is that as well. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you believe parents now need to be very open with their kids? Like talk about sex, uh, sex education and everything. Because like now you find kids until 14, 15, 16. Come on and watch TV show. People go to kiss. Uh, that yeah. means they know what's going to happen. Yes. But you try and ignore them. Toto wangu wezi, toto wangu juwi. Do you believe it's time for parents to just go like, and at what age should they start talking about these things? And they didn't tell is eight, nine, start having those conversations. Okay. They don't need to know what sex sex is. They don't understand what happens between two adults, okay. how they were born, all these things. About they need to understand about what underage sex can do to their lives, okay. how it can mess their lives. Because there's a lot of information on TikTok, Instagram, and even their peers. One of the things that we, we as parents don't admit, and we need to admit, not every parent is upset, uh, present in their kids' lives. True. Some kids are being raised by nannies, neighbors, as well. neighbors and all that. Teachers, so when kids come to school, they come from different backgrounds. And when they get into school, they hear stories from other families that are very not appropriate. Yeah. So if your kids don't learn the right things in your house, they'll be taught the bad things by their peers. Okay. One of the reasons why my kids don't use the school bus is because when my son was very young, he would be picked from the school by the school bus, and the kids were in the teenage years in the, in, the, in the bus, and they'd be kissing each other. And you know, most of most school buses don't have a teacher in the in the bus. Yeah. It's a driver and a, and a tout. It's a guy to drop and pick. There's no teacher, yeah. so there's no adult supervision. So which means, even if you don't think your kids have been exposed to these things, they have been exposed in the school bus, school bus. in conversations in even school, even bullying, even bullying. So you have, the, your, yeah. your kids must learn these things in your home. Do not delegate parenting to the teacher, to your pastor, to your neighbor, or to your nanny. Yeah. Parenting is your responsibility. If you had sex and you brought a child to this world, you have a role to play to teach those, that child values and morals and ethics so that they learn it from you, okay. not from the world. Okay. What's your take on discipline? Me, I, me, me, I spank my kids when they, I beat my kids. Yeah. I'll not lie to you. I don't remember the last time I beat my child. I think I rarely beat them because <coughs> we have conversations. Yeah. But there's something to do that I'll beat. So my kids, have I beaten my kids? Yes. Do I still beat them? No. Rarely. 
I don't remember the last time I beat them. But it doesn't come, the beating is, con is the conversation. Okay. What did you do? Why did you do it? You have this conversation and said, I'm going to beat you. But I've never, I don't slap them. I don't kick them. I don't hit them with my bare hands. We used to have a chopper stick, but I think it has disappeared. I think the kids <laughs> do it. But we used to have a chopper stick in the house. I'm a feature. I'm a feature. But the truth is, I've beaten my kids. Okay. And I have no apologies of regrets about it. Okay. But now they're too old to be beaten. So, talk. They know now, privileges can be withdrawn now. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing what you're doing in Penda Familia, bro, oh, that's brilliant. Why don't you delay Kufunga YouTube channel? But they, uh, if there's a team to help me, because I'm a busy man. Okay. Like I have content. If someone wants to come and shoot, like my daughter just, they're on the way, they're way back right now. They just came from Mount Kilimanjaro to climb. Yeah. They're my daughter and my, my wife, Njeri. Yeah. They're on their way back from Kilimanjaro. So there are many stories you can actually tell. We can tell you how we parent, what we do in our house. But there's no one. I don't have a team. IG stories. IG stories in a Because I was out. There's a time I was waiting. I was like, I used to come and watch all the time. We have such good content that we have shot in our house. You know, you guys have, you have AGMs in our house. We have family meetings. Where, where? We have yearly goals. People come. People write what someone did wrong. We agree on how we're going to move this week. We agree on roles. My kids, our our nanny doesn't cook for us most of the times. So we cook for ourselves. Everyone has a date to wash the dishes. I don't wash dishes. But the <laughs> kids bothy. do. Yeah, I know I don't. Uh, <laughs> Any other, I, I don't do manual got. work. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I, I can afford paid labor. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can pay you. Do you know me? I've never washed my car. Oh. This is about my first car. Why would I wash a car and the car wash? The people can wash the car. Why am I washing my car? Yes, I, I think I only washed my bike once. I'm like, no. There's someone who can I'm do this job. Let, let me use my time very well. Even when I was young, it's quite a full and go. You want to play with a full and a lipa? You approved school. No, no, not approved school. In my when I left approved school, when I was about 17, when I was my mother died and all that. When I was a teenager, I never used to wash my clothes. I look for someone to wash. I pay them. People must divide roles. Let me look for something. My life is useful reading or doing other things. Then someone else would do that. Why am I taking somebody's work? You know, IBM to Kazi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you find a good editor, videographer, if I can get a team actually, because right now we need an editor. We have content. We shot Dandora. We're planning to shoot so many stories. Yeah. But now the problem is who will edit? Who will edit? The time, bro. Too many CV, too many CV, too many CV wapi? Uh, when you do a slide in kwa DM, slide about, kwa DM, yeah, yeah. 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 Kazi hapo ushtukia, umeangukia. If I could get a very good editor, yeah, we could even have content just need to edit and put it out, out, out there. Ziko tu hapo tu ziko pile. Ziko tu content iko. Like, we also have like about uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage that made Softy. Softy original oh. cut was the original footage was 500 hours. Uh, the last cut before we did Softy was 10 hours. So there's a lot of stories to be told. Yeah. Hey, you're on the cars. Yeah. Too many CV, you know, come and I also saw that you love dogs. You got some yeah. bulldogs. Hey, my friend had dogs that, my last dogs, we had, uh, we had very big dogs that we don't yeah. have anymore. There was an incident. Yeah. They attacked someone, so we don't have them anymore. But we have, two, we have other four dogs. We have, we have the Kenyaji dogs in the farm. We need to survive. African Shepherd. <laughs> African Tasker. <Africa. laughs> yeah, that one. Because yeah. the one is called Simba. Of course. That is called Prado. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so unique. <laughs> <laughs> Who gave the dog name Prado? Is why <laughs> my kids. <laughs> yeah, Prado. Yeah, Prado. Yeah. Then we have we have atom. We have Cosmo and Oreo. So the big ones, Ilienda. This is Ilienda. Ah oh, man, I used to. The dogs, uh, they used to, they are, what are they called? They were just good like dogs. Boar bells. Eh? No, they were boar bells. Ah. They are close between, between a dog and a lion. Mm. Hey. But they attacked they someone. Buy. They attacked someone. Mm. <laughs> they are serious in that. Someone almost died, so. For real? Yeah. But we hash, hash, nini, nini. We're not hash by them. No, actually, it's a, it's a very traumatic situation. Because the dogs almost killed them. Ali, Ali, trespass. How much did you pay? No, they, they came. They were, they were not locked properly. Oh, where? And she had, had to go for a couple of surgeries, so it wasn't. It was. It was a. It's a sad story. Yeah, yeah. You guys had to really change. Now, yeah. fast forward. Boniface Mwangi started doing uh, activism full. Kuna kelele uli piga uhuru park. 
What was going through your head, bro? In your time, you trended for a while, a couple of years. Trend, excuse me, one week, two days. It's <laughs> you look what Boni Wamanduru. I've seen there's another gentleman who's trying to do. No, bro, I never used to scream. No, Ulionge Apo Kasema. I used to raise issues. Even when I, if, you find me, <laughs> if you find me screaming, eh. I don't scream, I raise issues by the Okay. So, those days, it was about MPs pay. I raised my voice. I've raised my voice many, many times. Ile nyu likuwa uhuru pa. Kulienu kaka pale kwa ulifika aji hapo. Sini laingia tu kwa. Si, it's a public meeting. No, kuna watu kuka huko. Lakini ulikuja, ulikuwa somewhere. You are not that far off. So, you just come early. Uka, 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 uka raise issues. Uka bebwa juju. Nika pigwa. Ulipigwa uka ukibebwa? They beat me, yeah. Ulipele kwa hapi? Uh, Parliament Police Station. How many days? No, I went. I released on bail, courty. Like I've had so many court cases. So I issue kondani. That's what you thrive. I don't thrive. It's suffering, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you know, people when they see Bonnie doing all these things, they're always like, he gets off on that shit. <laughs> that, that's what <laughs> makes him feel no, macho. No, 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 no. It's For a, real? it's a, it's a calling, bro. It's a calling. It's um, you're trying to highlight issues because I have a platform. People listen to me when I speak. So when there's an injustice or something actually happens, yeah, I speak up on people's behalf. I have saved tens, not hundreds of lives through my speaking, by exposing yeah. bad things, by speaking on their behalf, by getting them released. Do you remember some of the main ones? For example, your uh, Uru Park, that was for what were you I, I remember the, against? I think the, the main, main one that I can remember very well, yeah. forget about the Uru Park one, okay. is 2009 at Neo Stadium when Kibaki was president and I stood up to speak about what was happening in the country. And Kibaki called me an idiot. And he nita pumbavu. Na nika pigo, nika tupo ndani, nika lala ndani. Those were the days, there was no social media as much, but Karole Mtoko came to my rescue. Gonjiro Ambogo, Ronnie Osuma, the guys who came to my rescue. And then when I was taken to court, Paul Mute came to represent me. No one knew who I was. That's 209. And I remember Paul Mute again in court, asking who is the complainant. And people, and the, the prosecutor was saying that, you know, he shouted at the president and said, oh, unga, unga. So, Ubuta said, if the president can't testify in court, you have to acquit. That's how I was acquitted. Where, where? The one for Atoli as well. Um, it was Muita Bado who came to court and said, if uh, Atoli doesn't come to court, Pointless. then, you, then you, can, you have to acquit because he's a complainant. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. He's just been. Uh, yeah, so. During this time, Jerry's there. Jerry has gone through a lot, this. but now she's the one in the streets. No, no, cut your shoe and go to Barabara. Yeah, go to Barabara. It goes in the family. It runs in the family, yeah. So during this time, even the, there's a time where you're in Softy, the film, your family had to go in hiding. Uh, they of. lived in exile. They lived in the U.S. for almost a year. Because you are about to be killed. There were threats in the family and the threats targeting them, not even me. To silence you. You know, you go to the weak, to the weak link. Yeah, so like, they had to leave the country. Keep making noise, you're coming for your family. Yeah, this country is that's it. Well, to me, SMS call. They sent someone. Muta kujia toka ambia listen. And there were credible threats. Wait. Fast forward. Everything happened. Umekua in and out of court. Nini? Even your house got bombed. Pili kwa na I'm like, ah. Story of bombing of house. That was not activism. That was different. That was friendship. It was friendship. Uh, I was yeah. trying to defend a friend from being attacked. Yeah. And because they said they're going to kill my friend, I decided to go public about what was happening behind yeah. the scenes. And the man uh, felt very upset that I was giving this gap my public protection. Yeah. And he came after what I, what I cared a lot, my family home. But luckily, they, they all survived. Yeah. Uh, if government had not gone the way they were going, the man would be in jail today. He knows what he did. He may, may might be in government, but you know what he did. He mm. bombed my home out of pure jealousy. And you should someone should know actually if you if you if you you have a partner and they decide to leave you, they're not your property, they can leave you. No one owns anyone. I don't even own my kids. That my kids can decide to, from today on to call you dad and I'm done with you. And they have a right to do that. Everyone is independent. Um it's very 
petty and foolish to think that you're a human being. No one owns a human being because you do not create one. Yeah. Yeah. So that whole idea of the man felt like this lady was his property was like foolish. And I, I know he's still suffering. May he suffer till he dies. Wow. He was a baby. Mimi hapa siko. I am not part of this. Uh, <laughs> uh, by the way, speaking of bombs and everything, there's a time you are linked to blogs of course. Oh, to Terra Group. Wakasema you're being funded. Uko onekana kwa private jet. Uko onekana kwa limo. Tuko zile za wait a minute. These are times I think was it was it Gafla or Mpasho? Those were the Gafla was very huge uh -huh. kitambo so you go like hey kunfas wangi this guy's getting funded on a private jet living living large uko uko kenya so you are doing ted talks do you wear so do you wear you're learning with a private jet uh -huh. i've always lived large how it was easy so 208 was only 90k uh -huh. and you you actually had a bike also a super bike and then i went into i have done business so basically i was in a private jet uh -huh. I was going to speak at a World Bank, World Bank event. Mm -hmm. And they flew to New York and they got me a jet to my destination. Oh, they are the ones who got you the, the jet? The World Bank did that. I was, going to, I was going to speak at the event. Wow. When I go to TED, I'm going to speak. I get paid to speak. Okay. Yeah. You know, when I go outside this <laughs> country, I export, v -V -P. <laughs> yeah, I export knowledge. I go uh -huh. there to speak. I'm going to, I'm teaching in Florence, Italy next month. I'll fly there. I'll be picked from the airport. I'll be in a nice hotel. I'll give a two-hour lecture. I'll be paid thousands of euros. I'll come back. Because I have something to teach. Okay. So that's the reason why I was in a private jet or I was in a limousine. They pay for me for to do those things. Okay. Yeah. So it's the ISIS. Wait. No, no. Ask, ask. Don't, 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 be, don't be shy. Ask See, your question. <laughs> no, ask. So you've never been funded with ISIS? <laughs> By ISIS. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was a story. Terrorist. Yes. Do you think I'd be here? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been murdered. Yeah, that was so let me tell you. Let me tell yeah. you the difference. Okay. So some of us live every day and call out bad leadership and impunity and all those things. Yeah. If I was involved in any crime or anything that is criminal, yes. I'd be in jail. I have more enemies than friends in government. <laughs> that's true, that's true. I have had a court case with the president of this country now, uh, Ruto. Okay. The Langada Primary School and all that. You had a court case. He said that I've called him names and all that. So let me, if I was doing things that were illegal, don't worry, the police will arrest me for free. Because every day I'm calling out police officers for doing bad things. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us can't afford even to do the things that people like you do. <laughs> 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 we'll be arrested in the morning. For real? Yeah. Ah, let me tell you. No, but you, you know, you've derailed me. There's some but, things but, that but, I do but, but, that I learned from you. You know, I like me was a gari a wee wee. I never move. I'm like you could have sorted mm -hmm. the traffic issue. Please, I'm gonna talk on my pema. Please record and unless, share so, so encourage more people to do yes, that. Me unless it's an ambulance or yeah. a fire brigade. I don't know about normal two gari wee wee wee. Peter Jew. Peter Jew. Peter Kano. Tuna pele kananga. Tuna for the wrong side. So me actually, you. when they say, hey, hey, hey ba, 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 ba. I normally do this. Me, I never talk. Me, I just look at them no, and I'm just like, whatever. Yeah, you tell them to <laughs> go. Let me see I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. So, Akuna, what do you say? By the book. Our police say, I may do things by the book. Yes. You have to. Because you're trying to. So, the other thing, actually, um, I don't have security. I don't have a bodyguard. I don't have a gun. I don't have any of those things. Ah. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So I have I my God is my protector. That means I must live by God's word and I must okay. do things by how God wants me to do my own things. So I'm not I don't do dirty deals. If you look at the video, because I'm in court with Alfred Mutua, I, I, my, my my thing was actually me, I don't do shady deals. I'm not in this wash wash doing any nini. So why the fuck would you bomb my house? <laughs> eh? kufanya, kufanya, kuto kufanya shady deals costed you a seat in Stare. Yes, because I refused to bribe and all that. But I'm happy. Stare people are suffering because nowadays they call me, oh, oh Moshimiwa, Missy Moshimiwa. 
Bibi yangu amezaa. So what am I supposed to do? Oh, so you rent, you any. But what made you even decide to run for Starehe? Cuz I grew up in Starehe. That was my hood. No, like run. You are doing well as an activist I'm still do, I'm still doing well as a person, I've seen a lot of activists get into politics and then when I change. Okay. I'll not mention names. Okay, it hasn't changed at all. Lakini wana piganga kelele wakichukua tu vikiti. Ha. There's exception actually. Sasa what guarantee that we won't change? Because I haven't changed even now. You see. Don't don't worry but I'm, I'm in a bigger city than even being in parliament. Me I wake mm. up to my own time. Do you know do you know do you know let me let me explain to you. Okay. Obina. Politicians in this country are slaves to the people. You spend your best working moments with strangers. Yeah, true. Sure. Ukitoka hapo umeenda kwa event, umeenda kwa hotel, umeenda kwa mkutano, you see your family as a as a, a, a an afterthought. How many politicians spend quality time with their family? By the very few. Look at the president. He five days on the road. Akienda pale anasimama kwa basi na keti. Kwa kwa anatoka anasimama kwa kujua land cruiser anafanya fanya hivi anasalimiwa tu narudi. But it's it's a very shady life. It's I was in a campaign trail for three months. Yeah. It's a very useless lifestyle. Because you see the problem in this country, politicians don't work for the people per se. They use that chance to steal. So they don't really serve the people. So they have to do full-time campaign mode. When Ruto was elected, he has five years, right? Yes. He should be working every day. He's at State House, he's in Mombasa, he's just doing work every day. But right now he's in a rally, Thanksgiving, everywhere. He's just going everywhere. It's a waste of time. How many times do you see Ray Laudinga in, in rallies? Every other day. I'm like, do you want to live your life like that? Yeah. My, wa- my wife was happy when I lost. And I thought I was pissed that she was happy. But when I look back, I'm like, I'm happy I lost. You didn't. So my not have my quality, quality of life is much better than a politician's. Okay. I mean, one works for politicians. I tried to work for politicians during this campaign. You walk around with people. They just want to see you seated there. Look at the life they live. And the, I wish because I wanted to become a different kind of a leader. I wanted to be elected. Send me to parliament. I go work for you there. Not to come to your church or your mosque or your uh, rural show. Look at the parliament seats, they're mostly empty. But, most of the but time. They're supposed to be in parliament, but people don't do that. People yeah. use uh, political positions to go and make money. I was interested in making money. If I wanted to make money, I would be where I am today, and I'm still making money. When you decided to, after you lost, life went ahead, then in the last election, somehow you appeared, you joined Azimio. Yes. So, before you get into a Zimio trail and everything, and people called you a sellout because you were like, ah, the Uyo, I'm a lipwa and everything. Let's come back to Martha Karua, who is like, you're a very good friend. She's like a mother to me. She's like a mother to like you. Like a mother to my kids. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where did you meet and why is she like a mother to you? So, how we met. 2016, I was sued by Ruto for defamation. Okay. When I was sued, I was helpless. And Gitobi Manyara was my lawyer. And he told me Manyara introduced you to Mother Karua. I had known Mother. I'd seen her events. I'd photographed her. Yeah. And so Mother walked into my office in 2016 and said, I'll help you in your defense. And she became one of the lawyers and one of my witnesses for the, for the Ruto case, the defamation case, yeah. which eventually was thrown out and, and it's all good. Then when my house was bombed, Mother came and said, I'm going to help you get justice. She held our hands, me and my wife, took us to DCI, Judge Kenoti. Ken- uh, Motuwa didn't meet to be jailed for contempt for posting that he bombed my home. And so mother went to Machakos, represented me. She's still my lawyer even to, to date. Okay. So but she stood by me when, my, when I was sued by the president, Naoruto, and when I was sued by Motua. And even during other cases, she actually stood with me. Yeah. So she's been like a family friend. She's still a family friend. So when she was nominated by Yazimi, I said, you know what? I believe in her. I believe in her. I don't work for her for free. You can ask her and people in the campaign. I was, I was being paid. Hey, no, I was not being paid. You are not being paid. You are not So you see, if guys are going to a campaign trail in a chopper, they go to the chopper. I don't know that chopper. So me, I went to the campaign trail. Yeah. I helped campaign. I documented. And then the campaign ended. And here I am. So you, you are in the campaign because of Martha, not because campaign. of Raila? I, I believed in what they represented as a, as a ticket. Okay. And I still do. But I was not, I was never a member of Azimio. 
I supported Azimio. But you are not a member. I'm a member of Ukweli Party, which I founded. Hmm. So I'm still a member of Ukweli Party, which is not affiliated with Azimio. And I voted for Raila Odinga and Mother Karua. And I'd done that 10 years ago when Mother, when in 2017, I voted yeah. for Raila Odinga. 2013, I voted for Mother Karua, who I didn't even know because of what she's represented. So during this last election, yeah. you actually subscribed to their manifesto? Everything they I did. I believed in what they were representing, and I knew I, why I opposed the other side. Including the 6,000? The 6,000 shillings for single mothers. <laughs> you know, people are being paid monthly. 6,000. 6, there was that money. There's even a fund for single, single women as well. So that was free? It was free university. Oh. We shall never know because now we're not in power. Okay. So when you got into this, people are like, ah, this guy, sell out man. This no, is... see, let me ask you, selling out to who? To, the, to, to politics. People knew you as an independent contractor. I'm still independent even when man is independent. Then even when I, was, when I was in Azimio, I was very independent. I criticized our campaign tactics. I criticized <laughs> things way, online. Will, will he spill the beans? Me, <laughs> uh, no, me in a, in a respectful way. I was just saying the things that we should not do. Mm -hmm. Openly. I was just saying, this, you shouldn't do this thing, shouldn't do these things. And I, I only wish that they had listened to us. They would be in power today. Because some of us were just outsiders. Why do you think Azimio lost? Um, we had we had incompetent people okay. in very powerful positions, uh, and then we there was a lot of nepotism internally. So people employing their own relatives, and I think if the campaign was run by professionals, it would have turned out differently. Okay. The other thing, uh, our campaign believed so much in that so-called deep state, and we failed to organize ourselves. I also believe there's a lot of uh, pride among us. We thought we had already won the elections. So you, you knew. <laughs> Not even even our, we knew. our language, yeah. our posture, and he all that. That. That, was, that was foolish to do. Yeah. I also think that politicians must surround themselves with artists and creatives to help them think in a different way. There's a lot of um, same thinking in the campaign teams. People think the same way they've done things 30, 40 years ago yeah. are going to happen today. It doesn't. Uh, the other side had a lot of competent people. They had a lot of, they valued feedback and they valued whatever they were told because they did things the right way. They had a strategy. They had a strategy. Yeah. And the other side did not leak. Our ship was leaking too much. There were too many moles on our side. And they also think because there is a habit of some of the principles in this Azimio thing of not spending money. They refuse to pay for intelligence. They re refuse to pay professionals. They just refuse to pay because if they had spent the money they were raising, yeah. they would have won the elections. Because like, I believe they had Italia. money. Yeah. When I hear there was money being spent, me, I hear numbers to them like, what? I mean, you that you can't 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 <laughs> so that money should have gone to yeah. win the elections. Yeah, okay. And then lack of agents. So this is how you win an election. Uh, you ensure that when the votes are cast, they are counted for you, and there is no tampering. Raila Odinga lost in, with 240-something thousand votes, right? Those are the numbers that we lost with. So imagine there are 46,000 polling stations. All you have to do is steal two, three votes. Ruto had agents in Luonyanza. What that meant, even Raila people couldn't steal votes for him, even if they wanted to. Raila did not have polling agents in Rift Valley. No, imagine what happened in Rift Valley. Imagine what actually what happened in Central Province. The, the, I think there was a bit of recklessness from our side. And it's unfortunate for Raila Odinga to lose four elections in a row. Or to have four stolen elections in a row. What that means, he never learns from every loss. Because if he had learned from the loss of 2007, he would have been president in 2013. If we had learned from the 2013 loss, we would have become president in 2017. The learned from the 2017 loss, we would have been president in 2023. But he doesn't learn those lessons. And then we're saying, it's the people around him. Fuck that. It's the person. You can't always blame people around you. If, if this country is evil, Ruto is evil. Don't say the people around Ruto are evil. If the last that government was full of thieves, who was a thief? Don't, don't, don't try and do that. If you come to my house, and my kids insult you. Just know that I'm the one who's been insulted in your absence. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah.
So it's not the people, it's the person. No, yeah, because who sits on that chair? The president, right? Yeah. He's in charge. So Raila must have wanted this thing badly for him to win the elections. We, was, was there tampering? Yes. Was there many things happening? Yes. But he failed to do the hard work. I also wish, me I tell people, punish betrayal. Punish traitors. Raila hasn't punished people who have betrayed him in the last, since wherever he started running for office. They betray him, he forgets the comeback. So he, he has failed to show that there's consequences for what you do to me. Yeah. That is number one. Number two, he lacks loyalty. Half of the people in Ruto's government today were in Raila's side. Why did they cross over the other side? Because he doesn't reward loyalty. What Ruto did to his people is that he, he has been rewarding loyalty. People are loyal to him have been rewarded by him. So people were willing to die with him. People on Raila's side were willing to play both sides. Because they know maybe Baba, when Baba wins, he might not be on our yeah. side. I think one of the biggest losses for Raila was the people that he, he had in the last 2017 elections, which was a very bitter election. When that election ended, the handshake was him betraying the people that stood with him because he never consulted with them and he never explained wh why he crossed over to the other side. And that, went, and that cost him this election because he ran like the incumbent. <laughs> Ruto ran as the opposition. Yeah, by the way. Ruto yeah, opposition. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah Raila was not defending Ruto. No, defending Uhuru. Like, oh, why is Ruto insulting Uhuru? Well, like, don't defend those things. It's not your business to do that. Yeah. We are going around the country looking like projects. I was very disappointed. I was angry, but I was like, no. We don't. I was like, I went on Twitter and said, Uhuru should shut up. <laughs> <laughs> why, do you, why are you talking like that, young man? Yeah, you know, he's not funding us. I'm like, what funding? Me, I didn't even receive the funding. This is my chopper on a panda on a fuel. It's 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 a fuel. But as me, you had all the, like, we had everything. You had everything but like you, this. But, but you had idiots at the top. Yeah. You travel the country. You go to Lamu or you go to Nyeri. Instead of getting the locals to speak, it's Junet is the MC everywhere. Is there someone saying in Meanda, Kateni Miti? What nonsense is that? Even messaging was off. <laughs> and you try and tell them, get a local MC. Yeah. Get high people. Get music. Just have a plan. No. You know, I actually feel sorry for them. What are the my suit is a my CS position. Me I don't suit inauguration pia. I thought we had won the elections. I was happy. That time when you guys went and put the red carpet at KICC. Uh, what was that election? about, man? See, see, I told you we had won the elections. Even by the time, actually, even when Ruth was going to to Bomas, me I've been told we had won the elections. Me I knew because me you see, I was getting information from the from the now the our team. The yeah. deputy president's team, the who was supposed to be the deputy president. We've been told we have won. The numbers are fine. I was on Twitter telling guys and confirming we have won this thing. Because <laughs> me, me, I was going to be to be Shinda. Even even who thought even who thought you had won. Like who was running this no, country? He didn't think he knew. <laughs> I'm he, like, you, you know. At, at what point did you guys know? Anyway, he meant that like in the agenda side, he too. Where will Julia? What point? Me, Leona, when you certificate bombers. Oh. So before that, everything that was happening even, at Bomas... Even, even that one, when the, the commissioners are walking out, me I thought you had won the elections. You quite a drama, Pia. Yeah, me I thought, even now... Kina ole kina wakileta... Because Kiuliza, we have been sent numbers. Me, me even when I was going online, I was saying we have won. Because I could tell you have won. Like, ah. Even when we went to the Supreme Court, I was told you had a strong case. I'm like, okay. You know, I didn't your politicians' advice. We have a lawyer evidence. <laughs> <laughs> let me give them. A, let me give them advice. Okay. You know, one of the things people do. You are a creative. Yeah. What you do, even musicians, like creative people in the creative industry, they workshop their best ideas. You get your best ideas, and you call people and say, "These are our ideas." Well, how do you go about it? These politicians had a case, which some of us would have actually helped, but they get <laughs> among themselves. Because you know there's a class kunawatu up and kunawatu up and up. If they told us what they were going to take to court, we would have raised some of them on the year pana year. Like even the yeah, even the forensics do nini. Kuna vitu zingine zikuwa zingefakwa na kotini. But what do you do? 
ni kuna lori imepatikana bebeni ma box let's present this i was in, I, I'm not in your carrying those boxes sinyi <laughs> mulio <laughs> lord truck mukambia kutane online i don't do manual work touche i don't do manual work right. so fast forward everything may happen eh ruto amechukua what happened see in the azimio team i don't know see mimi kwa sababu mtandao wewe ulikuwa see actually when ruto has been sworn in i was in south sudan ah there has been sworn na na team yako mimi ni nafanya kazi you see bro me have to work i thought ulikuwa na team yako no i did not cry i think the, the only the, the time i cried actually is when uhuru became president in 2013 I was in the office and I cried and I said this kind is going to the dogs and I was right. When we won in 2013 I cried. Yeah. It broke my heart. So you never believed in because all the work we done because you see I, I was an activist between 207 yeah. 2013 and I didn't think those guys were going to become president for obvious reasons. Yeah. And when they did I cried. But that's the last time I cried even when I lost Sare. I did not cry. But you see I'm going to talk talk and talk for a purpose. I knew the kind is going to the dogs. Okay. Mm. So you never believed in the Uru presidency? I never did. And now Kenya Kwanza government. They love to prove that they mean what they're trying to say because they're lying to us. They lie about the price of unga, the price of gas, the cost of living. They lie to us that when they win, yeah, they're going to, fa- to form a, a task force or a commission of inquiry about state capture. They haven't done that. I thought our friends were addicted to drugs. I thought because uh root is a bible will in pastor that when he becomes president drug dealers and the guys selling cocaine in this country and heroin are going to get arrested I haven't seen crackdown on drug dealers and peddlers i thought that corruption will come to an end say corruption will ongezeka i over the weekend i was talking to the kipchoge keno family they are losing their farm family farm kipchoge keno is a kenyan hero he's in eldoret why he won an olympic see my grabbers too so this country right now is being run by washosh people When the president was sworn in, people who are on Instagram know the Washosh gang. So when Ruto was talking about people having tears state house and those the clergy on one side, on the other side we were seeing Insta stories of the Washosh gang filming themselves with state house in the background. So nothing has changed. You don't believe like they, they just need time and they will align everything because they said that they received what? a dilapidated Bro, one is a, 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 bro, a one is a long time my friend. One is a long time because no, but they go to government with no money. No, have you seen the cars they're driving? Have you seen the li- no, they are businessmen. They got their own money on the side. No, no, Kama no. Kama before kwa president money. alikuwa 200 million iko frozen mali because of whatever. But now when they got in wakapata pesa ya gava kuna. So I want to talk about two people then. Let's talk about uh Ruto and Rigathi. Okay. So Ruto joined from university youth for Kanu yeah. and already not MP. So he's been politics his entire life. Okay. Rigathi was a DO politics in their life they're billionaires where did the billions come what did they create for them to become billionaires you can either you the only way to become a billionaire in this country you either innovate yeah. you create something that doesn't exist or you steal or use the opportunity to steal so me i want to know how they can tell us how they made their money it's a farmer how did he buy the farm what does he farm makuku mangombe mahindi but you know one of the beauty i I met with Robert Alai I think 2 3 months ago. Yeah. Maybe 2 months ago. Robert Alai bought me lunch and we sat down talking about corruption. And the stories he told me because now he's elected, he's in those circles. I was so happy people die. I was extremely happy. Huh? Yes. It made me happy that we all going to die because the level of greed he described to me, the level of looting and land grab that is happening in Nairobi County shocked me so much i said i'm happy people die because some of these things, people the only way they can be stopped is death because most of them are untouchable you have a people in this country who can never be touched so i'm happy death comes and the thief dies and other life continues because some people the level of greed they have yeah there's not enough wealth in this country to satisfy their greed do you believe there's hope for kenya There is hope. Uh TikTok has give me hope, man. <laughs> I've said this many times. Uh-huh. The TikTok crowd, yeah. those young those younglings, yeah, uh, the Gen they Z's. give me 
Yeah, they, they, they don't care for nobody. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. They'll call out bad things. That the guys calling out people, teachers who molested them. Yeah, people yeah, who beat them way. up. They're the ones who have they they have no shame of sharing the story. One of the things, one of the ways to disempower people who criticize you is to talk about your shame and whatever they think is shameful to you. So if I'm a child of a single mother, say I'm a child of a single mother. Then if I can't I, use it. You can't use that against me. Yeah. So these kids have been able to take their stories and own their stories. Okay. And they give me hope. They're the ones who they can't be bribed to with five twenty seven shillings to go sing about the government or praise the government. Okay. They'll call out the government any day, any time. So just TikTokers is they are our only hope. No, so when I say TikTokers I'm talking about the kids below the age of twenty four. Yeah. They're very idealistic. They're hopeful. The ones above zero. They believe they can fix this country. Above 24, she doesn't mean diapers, marriage, ratio. Okay. And in the political debts. scene, do we have any? Do you have any politicians that mm. you see that these ones are maybe gonna change the game for the positive? I, I, I think, um, okay, um, yeah, okay, yeah, that's one. Uh -huh. I can't think of any other name of someone who has stood for the people like that. Babu. I don't know. I don't know. He needs. So. I don't know. Do you see hope in Gaucho? Who is Gaucho? He's like he's an activist right now. He's on the street fighting for the young people, oh. talking against the Nini. Interesting. Yeah. I don't. I don't know his politics. Okay. I know Koji politics. I know what Koji stands for. Okay. So I can say confidently that I know what he represents. Okay. Yeah. So the Kenya, Kenya, Kenya Kwanza government at the moment, are they, are they doing anything right that you've seen? That you go like, Hapa, we're on the right track. But he's in Guinea, not Kwambaya. So about three months ago, I was hopeful about Kenya Kwanza in terms of its judicial killings yeah. and police brutality. Then the protests came and they killed a lot of people. I was like, I've lost hope. Um, so uh, they, they love to prove themselves. You see, as a citizen, you don't owe any loyalty or love to the government. You owe the government taxes. That's the only thing you owe them. Anything else above that? Nikau Kitaka. Yeah. So they have to win my love and my loyalty. But right now they don't have it. Can they buy it? No, I don't want anything. There's nothing you can give me. What do you think I want? I don't know. Everybody has a price. For example, yeah. Mutai Nguni was very vocal he, against Ruto and the team. He's a political prostitute. That's a way we would let him give him a liar. Wait. Yeah. You see, <laughs> yes. Why do people work with traitors and people who betray other people? Because the, the guy betrays this one. Betrays this betray one. You, again. you don't have to work with such people. Avoid them. I mean, if you come today and you start coming to snitch about your best friend, I can't work with you. I can't trust you. Because tomorrow you go someone else snitch about me to someone else. Yeah. Hmm? That, that guy for 10 years was singing Uhuru's song. Then overnight that singing Ruto's song. You want more to No, I'm good. Okay. Because we saw Mutai Nguni was where? Na yeah. kwambia likwanga no kota kina Ruto. Baka nilikuwa niko like this gentleman. But, but even you think Ruto would be a fool to work with Mutai Nguni. But he's already there. Now he's talking a lot of... Uh... He's, he's trying to kiss the ass to get <laughs> the job. But <laughs> I don't understand how people like the taste of us. Imagine <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> imagine seeing your father <laughs> doing that. I'm going to do <laughs> it is it is very shameful. Don't people have like self respect? <laughs> yeah? No, but maybe maybe Mutai has seen something that other Kenyans have not seen on the Kenya Kenya Kenya. No, he's government. out in the cold. He doesn't know survive without government. So he's then look for a job. I saw stories that I think he's being paid five hundred and something per month. Is that I don't know how much he's paid unless he shows us his face slip. I don't know. And I don't even give a fuck about how much he's paid. So you feel he's a traitor? He's... No, he's not a traitor to me. He never worked for me. He has betrayed at me, Raila and Uhuru. But he never worked for me. So I met him during the campaign yeah. and he was underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, 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 there was a very foolish reason. I saw him saying that he was, he was the one funding Wajakoya. So the reason of Mtainguni, which was very 
foolish thinking. He thinks most young people drink, smoke marijuana. Kenyans talk about legalizing marijuana. We talk about this thing a lot. Oh, legalize yeah. marijuana. We talk about these things because we think it shouldn't be legal to smoke marijuana. Yeah. And people get framed for smoking marijuana. So in his thinking, he thought there's a, a population of this country that is huge that smokes marijuana. Yeah. So by supporting Wajakoya, he could actually have eaten the hustlers' votes and reduced the numbers for Ruto. Yeah. But it did not work out. You should have come and asked us. We talk about legalize marijuana, but you don't smoke marijuana. You just said because I think it's illegal and wrong for you to take someone to jail yeah. for smoking marijuana. Wait. <laughs> yeah. I also saw that story for saying, oh, we funded Wajakoya for this. I was like, okay. It was a, if, if it straight happened, it was a waste of money. Yeah. Hmm? But Wajakoya will enjoy. Yeah, they enjoy. Power to the people. <laughs> they, you, know, you know, like the debate, we're telling them, you say no going to be saying hyena balls and th these things. So remember that thing about yeah, hyenas? Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was foolish destruction. Okay. What we should, should have done in our campaign is focus on the messaging. And we failed to do that. I saw in an interview Juicy Juicy saying if we continue the trajectory we are going we might have civil war. Yes. You know one of the things that this country is on the cusp of yeah. is a revolution and it's a class war. The people that is so destroying the expressway don't use expresso. If you see them stoning cars, they don't use those cars. And they're feeling left out. The people who are going to eat Ruto alive are not as new supporters. They are Kenya Kona supporters. They were promised jobs. They were promised opportunities. And when those things lack, they're going to eat them alive. Come for you. So we don't have to do anything by the way. Let it be. If he does not fulfill the promises, at uh, your re-election at Apata, He'll be a one-term president, Ageuka. and he cannot steal the elections again. Yeah. At Oda Murusu, the ground will be very hostile. <laughs> the problem is who's going to become the next president. Like you're very sure about that. No, the people, the people, the people who don't have jobs. Yeah. Hunger. Let me tell you, hunger will make people eat you alive. The people going out in the streets are not going for Jait, our letter open Zuri. service. The yeah. the protests that happened that were very violent in the country. Yeah. It wasn't about open the service. It's about cost of living. But you know, cost of living has been constant around the world. Like, <sighs> come on. Yeah. Times you know, are tough everywhere. That might be true. Yeah. But if that's the case, don't remove all subsidies. And he removed all the subsidies. But the subsidies are not too to to So that at least people can afford to buy hunger. But, but do you know, know, do you know, do you know lipa? the which you have to pay? If, but, he, but he says, Ruto and Rigadi say, money was stolen. Yes. We borrowed money and the money was stolen. How come they're not going after those thieves? What are they waiting for? What is Ruto scared of? Or Rigadi? They're running the country. He's the president. He's the commander in chief. Go after those thieves. But we've seen a Kidogo, ruffling Kidogo. Which one? Walijuzo alikuwa kwa kijana wa Uhuru. Ali Banini. The guy was never. Uh, uh, Jomo was never in any position of power. He's just... Waka, waka okay, withdraw draw. nini. Those are, those are... Mambuzi zikaibua. That's, shamba. that's foolishness. That's silly. What you do, you have DCI. Yeah. Let them in, investigate economic crimes. Find out who stole the money. Where the money is. Arrest those guys and take them to court. Going to withdraw bodyguards or going after Jomo is nonsense. It's you new Toto. you new Jinga. Whoever advised to Ruto to do that is just a foolish person because don't go after the, his, his kids or his mother. Go after Uhuru himself. If Uhuru stole money, which I believe he did, arrest the guy. Don't don't go play around with the mother and the child. <laughs> eh? But Uhuru right now what, is what? doing peacekeeping missions. DRC. That doesn't take away what he did when he was president. Happy. That does not take away what he did as president. If he, the money was stolen when he was president, which was stolen, hold him accountable. If the SGR was a sham, hold the people accountable. If expressway money was stolen, hold the people who stole the money accountable. This country is not about God or the devil. Because the money was stolen by individuals. Yeah. Go after those individuals. Hold them to account. Make sure they pay. Recover what they stole. Or maybe, because Ruto sounds some looks like a coward, do a deal with those guys, give them amnesty, let them return what they stole. Oh, that's a good angle. Yeah, go and negotiate with them. Angle. Return 90% or 95%. Yeah. What? I see some of the governors 
showing off the, their wealth on, on social media. And you know very well that money was stolen. Yeah. There's also something on the side that I saw you speak about a while ago, about the U.S. visa story. Yes. And that thing, Imeni... Mekuasha. We nani under stress. I always think, you know, sometimes you get so angry by yourself, you're like, ah, if you can't beat them, join them. I'm always like, why would I pay for a visa? I don't get it. Then you don't refund me the money. Then I have to... It's the same thing with passport. Like, why is passport taking so long? And then if you pay, it's for stuck on a little company motor. I can't understand that. Corruption. But the visa issue, yeah. uh, if Ruto cares about the hustlers, it's an issue you can pick up. Okay. You can pass the law and say that Kenyan laws, visa fees, if you don't get a visa, 70% is refundable. There, there must be a way around our foreign policy yeah. to make sure that it, the embassies don't take advantage of Kenyans. Because you're passing in uh, To run the embassy, and come, it comes back as USID, it comes back as aid. <laughs> okay. You've been funded with your own money. You're funded with your own money, Rajilipia. Because you book and then and then it takes too long. Three, da, 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 da. One year, two years. Yes. Yeah. I also saw you are very uh, close friend to Dr. Willie Mutunga. Yes. How is that friendship going? You guys meet once a month. <laughs> Munakula. Like, Jackie, see, you have powerful friends that I want. Ukuna Mata Karua, Ukuna Dr. Willie Mutunga. I'm like, yo, your friends. Yeah. Your friendship in Endaje? It's very good. Uh, he's a wise old man who guides me in life. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you guys been close now? Maybe almost 10 years. Wait, wait. 10 years? I saw there's a, uh, two, three weeks. You in the last July. protest, Juicy. Yeah. Alienda kapigwa tiagas. It's Central Police Station. Unama kutenda na wepa nipe niwepeleka daktari. Unama show me your friends. Mbono liyabe daktari ya nasa survive na tiagas? No, police wali tuwonea bana. I did not think they're that foolish. But wajwa makara wakenya ni foolish. I'm like, Dr. Willi Mutung, you guys, really? Wangetu wame tutoke vizuri bila kutupiga tiagas. Yeah. But inuwa jinga. Has he recovered? No, yo, tiagas una inhale, una pona, una kunya maziwa, una lalo, una kotu saa. He was not traumatized about it. He's like, yo. Uh, he used to be in the streets in the 90s. So uh, he knows. He's relieving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not a young man anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So now I want us to talk about a business that you ventured into. Yes. Because now we've done a recap of your life story and everything. Now most people see you online and they're like, ah. Yes. Yes. So, uh, video in a short while, just now I'm asking you for it now. And then uh, we get in that But before that, we close to Mauza Vip, what happened to Mauza Vip? Hello, in Kajado County. The road is... And then, pia wezi kuwa naendesha gari na umeva hivi. Utashiku, hata kwa mbiga gari siyo yako. So, naingia Raw Fit Style Hub. Wanakupatia manguo moja safi. Unapiga nguo, unaingia luku inakuwa. Okay? Their prices are very affordable. They have a lot of amazing clothes from the suit that I normally wear to sneakers, to jeans, to jerseys. Talk to them. They're in Westlands. That's Karuna Close Bavaria Gardens Shop number one. Get in there. Wambia ubina mekutuma. Watakupatia nguo moja smart. Now, of course, manaume ni kapesa. Sindio www.more2bet.com Try their crash game. You can play from as little as 10 bob. The trick is to cash out before you crash. Nayo pesa niyako. Alright? More2bet.com But for now, tunengia kwa mashamba. Kuna wale watu wanatafuta shamba. Umegongwa, umelimwa, umenyoroshwa. Ujui ni wapi utapata shamba yenye iko affordable na pia iko na title deed. Na shamba true. Si shamba ununuwa kwa uyu unapata ilipitua kwa uja ama I want you guys to watch this video. Hello, in Kajado County. The road is dusty, but it's accessible. Here we are, sell your land. We're in Kajado County. In a place called Serengei, it's Pat Mashuru. It's 102 kilometers from Nairobi. The land here from the, to the road is about two kilometers. Perfect, perfect land for farming. But if you want to open a school, perfect for a school because there's water 
and there is beautiful scenery. And the land is being sold at a very good price. Per acre is 600,000 shillings. And the price is negotiable. So if you go and get a couple of your friends and you come together and you put your money together, you can buy this land as a retirement place in the future. But between now and your retirement, you can use it for farming. Look, the produce of this land. And you can farm watermelon, you can farm garlic, you can farm onions. The, the, the possibilities are endless. This land has two boreholes fully installed with PVC pipes for piping. The land has workers' quarters for you. There is storage for your manure, or that is fertilizer, storage for your seeds, and the land is in a very, very beautiful place. And if your mother or father or you want to sell some land and you want me to tell your story, come to me. I'll sell your land. I'm your honest land broker. All right, there you have it. And we can get to hear from the honest land broker. Land broker. <laughs> hey. Hey. HLB. It's hey. called HLB. Boniface Wamogoda. Hey, Wamogoda. But do you want to Mashamba? Because my friends are um, looking for genuine land. Okay and they don't know how to get genuine land with a good title. Okay. A lot of land, con men, sham deals, shady deals. So in 2020, I had some small chamber was selling so I could build my home. Okay. And I sold to my friends. And they're like, don't you, can't you get me more? And I started selling land. So I've been doing that low-key, but now I want to do it like a big scale. So okay. I don't buy every land that I sell. What I do, I ask someone, are you selling your land? Do you own the land? I get the title, we do a search, it's clean. Then I sell on your behalf, I get a commission. Oh. Mm. So are any brokers, Asa? I'm actually a broker. But I ensure that the land I'm selling is genuine so that okay. the seller doesn't get You are doing conned. the due diligence on your end? Uh, yes, because if we get conned, you know where to find me. <laughs> so you know that I will not sell you a bad deal. Uh, uh, yeah. What happens? No, see, I'll be held accountable. So, um, you see, my reputation is everything. Okay. My integrity is everything. So, I'm using the reputation that I have okay. to ensure that I can source for good land, genuine land, okay. titled, and then get buyers for it. Then I get a commission. And I, get, I can pay my bills and become continue being the people's watchman. Okay. Yeah. That place where you built yours, there's, a name, there, there's a name you gave Carriage it. Base. Carriage Base. Yes. Carriage Base. How big was a piece of land? The, where my house is? Yes. 15 acres. 15 acres? Yes. You own 15 acres? Yes, I do. Yo. But it's, okay. it's dry land. It's a combined. Yeah, no, it's land. It's land. <laughs> it's dry land. 15 acres, bro. So that's your home is? Deep state. Deep. Actually, I want to make it an Airbnb from next month. Ah. Yeah. Because we live in Nairobi because of kids. You're really there. So I'm really there. So we want to make it an Airbnb. So this 15 acres, we uh, have No, that's like our land, but I've sold some other or oh, around. around. See, you're 15 on your inheritance. Gava ki niuwa. But they say university. <laughs> Those who live by the sword. Hey, no, yeah. no. But they should they shouldn't kill me. I, I am harmless. No, they they will not. Mm. No. So, apart from this one near home, ukapata nyingine wapi ukauza? So I've been selling land. So I track record. We are looking for track record. That's what we are going for. <laughs> You're calling Kiari on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do I say? We are losing two shamba karibu na penya meka. Last year, I did find a pack of some shamba. What does he know about land? I know, I know a lot about land. Yes. yes. So if someone wants to buy land today, what's the first thing they do? Uh, the first thing that you do, you ask for the title. Okay. You do a search. You ask for the green card. You see the the, the history of the land. Okay. And then from there, you can be able to go to the next level. Okay. But the key thing is search. Okay. You have to search. You have to search. Okay. Sasa saizi, ni shamba gani yenye uko nayo yenye bei yake kidogo unaona tuna Niko na tunawezana nayo. Are we running? Yes, yes. Okay. We are, we are live. Ujeni mbona no ni light tu mtu amekanyaga wire. Nataka 50 by 100. This is actually <laughs> what you're drinking. Ni red drink. drink. Yeah, yeah. Hapa tunataka watu wako sober minded. Mm. So the land I have is 50 by 100. 
and it's going for six fifty thousand. And then it's next to me. Fifty by hundred. Yeah, uh, for six fifty thousand. Wapi? The title is in, in Lukenya. Oh. The title deal is my name. You buy, I sell it to you. I have water on site. I have electricity on site, and I have a farm there. So you'll be my neighbor. Okay. Yes. Anywhere else apart from this? Right now I have land in Kitengela. I have a fifty by hundred for one point two m. I have another land in uh, LS, LS, LSNK, which I'm selling for twenty five million. There's a house I'm going to. There's another land in Thome, selling for twenty eight million. Hey, you mean you go serious? They go serious by the because you see, hey. I wake up. So how is my day like? Okay. I wake up, maybe work out, then go online and highlight people's problems. And in between, I can do other things. I have a TV show called Semo Koli. We just built a studio. Okay. And we all, all we want to do is actually highlight injustices and violations. Okay. So if you're a victim of injustice <coughs> or violations, Good job. or you're fighting a powerful person and you're afraid, come to me and I'll highlight your story for free. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, sangapi? I wake up at 5.30. 5.30, unaingia gym kidogo. Yeah. Masitaps, mbili, tatu, unasingia. Ah, Until some words, yeah. Uh, unaingia online. Na pele kamtoi chuo kwanza, and then unaingia online. Okay. Unaingia what's really going on. Uh -huh. Then I can go shoot videos for whether it's a mokoli. Okay. And now I'm doing land videos for people. So I go do land videos. Okay. Yeah. And I really want, actually, I wish, when the family, actually, going back to when the family, I wish there was a way we could actually highlight what really happens in our house. Because... Yeah. I can learn from you, you can learn from me, and can yeah. learn from each other. Yeah. And you can also encourage other people to document their lives as well. Okay. Yeah. Sawa. Clients, wame nunuwa mashamba? Clients, sama. Yeah, yeah, do you have clients? But you have a place to have a customer. I said, I'm going to go to the hotel, and I'm going to go to the But they have sold land, I've sold land to friends of mine. Yeah. To at least, I have like 20 or so neighbors that have sold land. Like people that I know, especially from my best friend, to my lawyer, to my sister. <laughs> 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 I have other lawyers. But the Karuan was a shamba. I had a kid shamba. She's telling her lad as well. Oh, okay, mm. okay. So I'm telling her, I'm her broker now. Nyambie ni ni tafute mtu. Hata Ruto ni zoze shamba yake. Nda kuza gani? So Ruto wakimambia uze shamba uta Ruto a customer. I let a customer, yeah. Okay. And so far it's doing okay? I'm doing very well. I'm not complaining actually. Okay. Yeah. So where do people find you when they want land? On because you appear with this light called DM. Come on. So, uh, okay, my office. Oh, office, yeah. It's called Owens Kothek. Okay. Metropolitan Court. House number 14. Owens Kothek Road. Okay. Metropolitan Court. House number 14. Agwings. No, nasema. Agwings. See, Agwings. 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 Kizungu wa juli kuja na mene. Yeah, yuri kuja lubo. Agwings. Agwings Kothek. Yeah. All right. And power 254? Power equal. My wife runs power. Still surviving. Oh, we will talk. Uh, status. I left six years ago. When, when, you, when you're going to elections. run for office, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you've never... Never done what? Ukatata kufanya zile ma street festival? No, actually, street festival, I think it's important. Yeah. So when Sonko was a uh, governor, yeah. he stopped us from doing the street festival. Why? Uh, he was just foolish. Now the governor, Sakaji is the governor. You have tried because you used to have a deal with the county government. Uh, Kidero wasn't the best governor, but he used to give us the streets for free. Yeah. So he give us the streets, and we get, we come and close the street, and we do everything. If Sakaji is watching this, or his people are watching this, power still wants to do the festival. They're not All doing it, Nairobi festival. They're doing, it's a copycat, and it's fine. We can have more than one festival. Yeah. But give us Kwenanga Street just one day on a Sunday in December, we do it. We're ready to do it if they give us the streets. If they give us the streets. If you know Sakaji, you can ask him. <laughs> I know Shafi. You yeah, Shafi. <laughs> I, know, I know Shafi and Sakaja. You yeah. just need to. You get Shafi, you get Sakaja. The thing is, yeah. uh, there's no. You can have 10 festivals in Nairobi. You can have Nairobi Festival, you can have Power Festival. Give us Konanga Street. Give us Konanga Street. Yeah. Song but the problem with politicians, they want you to beg. Some of us don't know how to beg. Yeah, uh, now that's normally the bad thing. I don't know what you, you want me to come and beg you yeah, to do you a festival that will cost me money to do, and I'm not going to, going to get anything. You know, and then we, that's the problem. So we don't know yes. to do that. Yeah. Yes. Ah, yeah. So Maswali is another queen here for moto. Are you still running for a political office again? No. Hey, <laughs> shut ah, yeah. Let any more of those questions now. Now Maswali is in a song. Ah, yeah. Do you support Mandamano? 
Uh, yes, I do. I support the right to protest. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sema, <laughs> what's your talk about the Kenya Kwanza and Azimio? What's your take? I so far I've seen like, and Azimio and Azaku. So far I've seen like it's more very selfish. Yeah. That there's no, we, they're not putting our interests as Kenyans at the center of the talks, and okay. how they do. John, I hope you're here. You John, I hope. And I hope they're not going to use them to create positions for themselves. It okay. will break the heart if that happens. Okay. Aya. Muta wana sema, oh, sorry, ya shamba umesha sema watapata wapi. Wana sema, muta kita kuza shamba pia? That's what I do. I sell people on behalf of people. As okay. long as it's genuine land, I'll sell it for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Eliza. Uh, no, muta wana sema, uh, you are using words that I don't like to use, though. Fuck. Le, le, no, 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 oh. no, 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 no. <laughs> Are you still an activist? Yes, I am. Uh -huh. That's not something that you. It's like wearing my clothes. But when I say my size may reduce, they don't see on the streets. What's happening? Because I, I. No moka. No, 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 no. You don't do manual. <laughs> no, not, not manual work. I, I, let me tell you. Even when I used to the streets, yeah, I was not poor. I haven't been poor for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, hey, hey. Uh, kuna lens. Kuna <laughs> lens. I don't protest because I'm poor. Yes. Or oh, I don't have work to do. I have work to do. Okay. I'm a busy man. Okay. But I protest because I believe in those issues. Okay. Right now, there are people who are protesting. So, me, I give them support. When people get arrested, I'm not going to go bail them out. Okay. You know, I'm a general man. I'm not a constable or a lieutenant or a colonel. Yeah. I'm a general. So, a general, I'm a boardroom and I'm a, I'm a troops. I'm a troops. You have to think strategically about how you protest. Just don't go and protest like this. <laughs> oh, when you have to protest? Strategy. No, I gave them ideas, but they don't listen. So, you know what i Okay. Mm. All right. Must someone have an appointment to see you at your office? I know you can walk in. Yeah. We're just trying. We just, we haven't fully opened. Okay. I, we are hiring now, so. Yeah, we'd rather just finish hiring, so you don't have jobs. In case okay. people are going to send their CVs. So we could have gone on Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you still support artists like Deeper Connection? We support all of them. Actually, Power does that. Power has, an, has a, a fantastic cut facilities. I'm opening up TV studio for guys who come and record. Yeah. So come. Okay. Mm. Uh, is Jabu still homeschooling? No, 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 no. They, they, we took them back to school because Jabu used to complain that my, I think my sister is my best friend. <laughs> and it was boring for him. So they were complaining of each other. You see, no, you see, my sibling is my best friend. Oh, I have friends. Oh, I have friends. Ah, okay, mm -hmm. okay. And by that, I also wanted to ask you the naming of your kids. I realized this a bit. It's not normal. So my firstborn is Nate Simpiwe. Simpiwe is a Zulu name. Okay. Um, and that means gift, okay. blessing. And then my daughter is Naila Sifa. Naila is Arabic for successful. Then my last one is Jabali Mboya, named after Tom Boya. Uh -huh. yeah. Why did you decide to name them like that? I want them to be Pan-African. I didn't want them to be to have their tribal names. So if you, if my kids tell you their first two names, you don't know the Kikuyus. Because yeah. you didn't want to name our kids after our tribe. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Ebu Mulize, kwani kuna deadline ya kulipa loans the country? Kwanini? Ibeje zina kimbizwa. Lazima watu wakule. Yeah. What inspired you to become an activist? My shida za Kenya, my friend. Shida za Kenya. Because I suffered when I was young, no one spoke for me. Yes. When I was able to get a voice, I want to speak for other people. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you still rugby players? What? There was something about rugby players? I have no idea. Yeah. Your kidogo, a former con nini sentence, uh, I beg. Uh, what's the main goal, objective of your activism efforts? We've spoken about that. Fix this country. Yes. Yeah. There is a philanthropist, Boniface Mwangi, was linked. We already spoke about George it. George Soros. Everyone George says Soros. that. Bro, if there was Soros money, they would have known by now. <laughs> Don't worry. Me, I tell <laughs> guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, all my cars, yeah. you'll see all my cars are old. Yeah. The, youngest, <laughs> the youngest I have is 18. Yeah. The oldest I have is like 40 years, 1987. When we come now, we have a staff. We have a story. Yeah, drive Jalopies. That's when I say man, feature, why? That I mean, why is he in this Mercedes Benz? That, 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 that guy is like 23 years old. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm saying. 
kuna magari wasema magari watu magari affordable magari affordable yes. you fix me with the car kitoka hapa sasa hivi sasa hivi tuongee sasa hivi tuongee alikuwa influencer walikupatia yako alikuwa mpatia yangu haya ni dakika na pia watu wa mashati anipatia shati i need to get a few more shirts eh uh, okay okay your plan will be plug ya manguo nini sawa haya yeah. got you i got you haya now this is the last question uh, what is your net worth wow Wow. Ndio <laughs> hiyo. Uh, what is your net worth? Tuonge pesa. Should I be saying this on TV? Yeah, why not? Unless you have something to hide. <laughs> no, it's my wealth. You see? Yeah. Uh, when I ran for office many years ago, I declared my wealth because I was a public. I was yeah. running for public office. Yeah. Right now I'm a private citizen. So I shouldn't be disclosing my wealth in public. Because what I'm going to do is give people gossip fodder. Yeah. Uh, True. However, I am not poor. That's no, this now story I'm poor. No, no, you see so so, so, so I'm not I not suffering. I'm not suffering at mm. all. You can eat what you want, go where you want, do what you want. Not every time if I budget for it. <laughs> <laughs> Then you are poor. <laughs> <laughs> no, because yeah. even even rich people budget. Don't you see the president goes for holiday once a year? No, yeah, they are too busy. That's what I was telling you. The quality of life of a police in this country is shit. Yeah. Imagine you wake up to the guys in the office at 5:30 a.m. taking pictures of people on social media. You know that is that is actually poverty. Like a video <laughs> king here. Okay, you go office at 5:30 a.m. Imagine. Oh, don't you feel your morning glory? Oh, na post to Twitter. <laughs> at least some of us when we wake up at 5:30 a.m. we're going to the gym to work out. Okay. And so, but let me tell you, I only wish. Our leaders were deeper than just um showbiz. Yeah. Because the role of a president is to it's it's just to run a country. Okay. Not to run political rallies, not to run politicians, not to run parliament, just to run a country. Yeah. So President Ruto should be in the office maybe 8 9 a.m. Yeah. Sees what's the agenda for the day, does those things. Not busy opening roads, cutting ribbons, to be opening sewerage, to be drinking tap water. You know, do you know how useless that is? Do you know una kila saa ni kuamka kupigwa picha? You know it is a very useless life. Ni si namba. Eh and it's si namba. And let me tell you, you know why some of these people can't retire? They don't really know any other life. Wana unza let tunaenda wapi? Let tunaenda wapi? By the way. I always think that about someone. I'll mention his name, but yeah. I always like this guy survives on this politics. Because there's nothing else to do. Because na kuuliza, you never see your favorite president or favorite politicians in a theater watching a play. Actually the person that I admire a lot because i meet him in the same spaces yeah. is a nyang nyongo by the nyang nyongo na na bomb unapanda nyang nyongo kwa theater unaona na play music yeah call leons tuko na call leons ana your life ni nini yeah me life yangu i think it's because of the daughter yeah because you know yes we yes love that oh okay even give, give the bona still rights poetry yeah even willy you gonna find willy watching indian movies yeah or watching a football match this peace they have life there's like a life You go and have lunch for 2 3 hours without you looking at your phone kuna tender ju kuna nini ah, i'm like it's a peaceful Nani life nani wapi ah it's a peaceful life okay so in conclusion i wanted to give us a few pointers number one, a pointer of being a good husband number two, a point of being a good parent Who's number three, a good three, husband a <laughs> no, maybe because what we see uh, yeah. from penda familia they can jeri kwa hot sita say hey Hey, <laughs> yes. So good husband, good parent, uh, a good politician and finally a good citizen. All right. So let's start with a good husband. So marriage is more than love. Okay. It's a commitment. You commit to love someone and not every day is rosy. Okay. Oh, acha nimeamua nianze tena niangalie pale. Wa wa wa. Wait. Okay. So marriage is a commitment it's beyond loving someone okay. you commit to be with them to be there for them and in marriage don't say everything that you're thinking yo yeah nyamazia kanyangia tu okay and then don't be the one who call out for mistakes every time let it be if you want someone to change change your ways and they'll see you have changed and they'll change with you okay. to be a good parent uh presence is more important than presence Uh, memories are better than money. 
to spend more time with your kids, let them know you. And uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't always a good parent. I think COVID helped me become a better parent because when COVID happened, we could not travel and we're in the country a lot, which me, I used to be done traveling a lot out of the country. So I was able to stay home, I cooked for my kids, and we became better friends during COVID. And now we are very good friends. We talk about my kids, about anything. So the more time you spend with the kids, the more comfortable they're going to become with you as a parent. To be a good politician. politician. Or activist. I think, so politics is about, if you're a good politician, you love the people that you're serving, and you love them enough to tell them the truth, and to live your truth. So don't let politics change you. The reason why I lost the elections, there are many factors, but I refuse to bribe, and I refuse to lie, or change my values. So don't change yourself for the, poli for the people. Just define what are your values are and stick to them. If they elect you, well and good. If they don't, still your life is going to be enjoyable. You don't have to serve people in politics for you to serve people. You can serve people from anywhere. Because I'm not in politics, but I still serve the people. To be a good citizen uh, is to hold your leaders accountable and not to ask them for money or for bribes or for handouts. Tell them to do the job they were elected to do. So stop relying for handouts from, your fr from politicians or asking for Harambe money. No, no, no. Tell them to work so that you have money so you don't need a harambe. And finally, to be a good human being is to love people and to love yourself because you can't love others if you don't have self-love. So one of the ways you can live a happy life is to have self-love, which means you create me time. Don't be apologetic about living your life the way you want it. You have to love yourself for you to love other people. So the Bible says that uh, love your neighbors, you love yourself. So you must have self-love for you to be able to love other people. So love yourself. There's nothing like too much love for you. Just love you. And if you love, you're going to love humanity and you're going to love everyone else. And then, we say to Karoho, it's never that serious. Don't walk around with bile and hate. I actually don't hate anyone, which is interesting. For real? I have zero hate for anyone. Not only kufinya kwa manini. I despise them. Siku chukina kutha ra. But I don't hate them. I have no room for hate. Hey. I will avoid you. I won't hang out with you, but I don't hate anyone. I don't even people have done me bad things. Yeah. I'm unable to hate. Because they're like, ah, it's fine. So yeah, will you do like mm -hmm. in this hour too? You could do sa. Swali nataka kuleza sana. Yes. When you lishiko kafinyo mahu. Yeah. There's no function. They do actually, but I say seen a urologist in my twenties. Ah. Those guys fucked my balls, but I'm fine now. But it's it, like So you could run a nini? No, they so the police actually like there's a young man who was last week was the OCS Central Police Station, Moses Mutai, broke an activist rib. The police have a habit of hitting people where you can't show. So they can break your ribs, they can hit your kidneys. So they hit places where you can't even show. They'll hit your private parts. You don't go to court and put your private parts on top of the table and say, Lili Gongo. So it's very embarrassing, but it is what it is. But a function, you can bring your wife. <laughs> when I'll get one, I will, I will holler. <laughs> Bring kuna, your kuna no, this is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. I said, could you buy No, what I told you, Patia, that was a joke. Yes. Was sell to your party and you sell agenda. <laughs> yao. Kuna <laughs> 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 maina yes. Maina Amana, sema, this guy, Boni, so amazing. One day he helped me after I got arrested for trespassing Uhuru's land, the Pali Kenyatta Road. For parking alongside the road. Shukran sana boni. I hope Obina you read this. I'm Haribu sure you've been forgotten like Kini. You but do too many good things back in your life. Some of the people that I don't remember, but there are, there's so many things that have happened to me because yeah. of what I've done. So like there's a time police will be sent to arrest me. They're like Bonto Shiki Pushiki, Butoroka, Amazima Simu, Amafanya Ivi. But they have friends everywhere. Our friends in State House. Our friends <laughs> everywhere, by the way, in mm -hmm. the intelligence, have the friends in the military, our friends everywhere. Like Bonito Nakukujia. Actually, even Kupanya. the guys who who hate me are still my friends because when they're in trouble, they come to me. There's even a, a governor now who's very senior. When she had a fight with Ruto, she came to me for help. Like they always come to me. There's a guy, I'll come, Sarana Uhuru, Nakuja Kongo, there's a guy, there's a time some land is grabbed. I remember parliament can't say Bonito Exposi. Join your Nakula and my business angle. But I'll actually expose. Thank you so much, my brother, for coming through. Thank, thanks for having me. Uh, reach out to Boni, get some legit land. By the way, I normally get very pissed when I seem to Amarusha story a land. 
some of your friends who say, "Wembo nuli peleka," but I don't need the pesa unajua nini. But actually, even uh, the other things, celebrities in this country have made people buy very useless luggage. Yes, that's yes. very true. That one I wanna agree with you because you know what celebrities endos. do? Wako nanja. Wana lipo? Yes. Wana endos na toka. Bro, we have this piece of land. Can you market? I say, "Hey, I've seen too many people fall in such scandals because our Jewish shamba ni ukora." I don't even sell any land. Like, yeah. I must go see the land, and if there's value in that land, I'll sell you the land. But if the land is useless, I'm selling the land. I don't need money. Meskia doesn't need money. <laughs> Mimi kama unauza zama nitavute. Umeona bana uza vitu ngapi? Nguo, magari, kuna nguo, kuna moto bet, sasa hivi kuna mashamba zako. Kuna soko ya wanawake. Unataka bibi? Soko ya wanawake. So you are looking for a wife. There's yeah. a market for women. Wako wapi? Fanya your auditions. <laughs> <laughs> are you eligible? <laughs> yeah, okay. Strangely enough, why are you afraid of women? Or uh, my last relationship was very abusive. Ole, 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 yeah. Let me not get it. We, we are actually in court. Actually, we have a hearing tomorrow. Uh, is it a child dispute? Yes, yes. So it was very bad. And so when I got out, uh, now where I am, then also I got a very serious heartbreak later. So I'm just like, so that is anytime you want to get close to someone, you're just like, oh, you're here to finish me. Because, <laughs> because I have a question. So yes. your baby mama. You have a child together. Yes. And you're gonna be in this each other's life forever. Yeah. Is there a way you can actually find another way of dispute resolution that doesn't involve the court? I found it. I'm actually I didn't take her to court. She took me. Ask her if you can do an arbitration because courts are not the best place for resolving your things because what what's gonna happen? You're going to air your dirty linens in front of strangers. But if you can get friends or someone who is who who doesn't have to take sides and do arbitration and you come to an agreement because this ugliness of a court process yeah. will affect how the two of you are going to co-parent. You know, you have, I, a I life, wish, you have a life together. I wish it was that easy. You have a baby mama. But the other gender, I don't have a baby mama. Yeah. But my wife, when before I used to call my wife baby mama because because <laughs> they got her pregnant before we got married. And that's still for another day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I wish it was that easy. I've uh, I have three baby mamas. Jesus <laughs> Christ on a wooden bicycle. Why I know yeah, I four I, kids I know, and three baby mamas. I know why you're not married. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> you're watch, f- watch, watch my interview. I've spoken about Are it. And f- also watch my kids' YouTube channel. Like they talk about everything, and they spoke about everything there. You know, you know why my wife got pregnant? Yeah. Because I didn't know how to use a condom, and she didn't know how to use a P two. Okay. What's your excuse? I was 20 years old. This was my first sexual experience. I didn't know any better. But the lady already had another child. So how she knew? She actually taught me. My first baby mama taught me everything. My wife was a virgin, so we were both trying to find out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nini likuwa zile yo, wow, okay. Kumbi akoni zile mama. But uh, so, the, so this other, the last baby mama. That was, uh, the last baby mama was. Uh, she has two two kids. So have the you thought about polygamy then? No. Why not? We say enough. I'm not a polygamist. I Are you I not laugh. Sure? That's a problem. Are you sure? Yes. If I love you, me na kwatu bonzo. That's the problem. But kasi kupendi. Ah. Aupo utajua. Me ni kupenda ni kona 24/7. You obsessed. Now that's the problem with me. I'm like uko, I ni kona. Oh, uko api and ngoja na fanya nini? Hata angekuwa ameka hapa. You need to go for therapy. I know, man. Yeah. So there's a lot of things by there that I've also learned yeah. through my life and my kids and my baby mama. I'm gonna subscribe like your you. kids to YouTube channel. Yeah, tell like you need to check. L- let's let's, few... let's do a hangout with the baby mamas and uh, my kids. Ah, you wazy baby mamas. <laughs> hell no, hell no. <laughs> the kids. I always okay. wanted my kids to meet your kids. So let's do so at least one. Let's way. do a video show live. You need yes. to carry this desk at Courage Biz. Where where? With the kids. There you go, Hunter. And then, and then we make you slaughter a goat. And then yes, yes, us. okay. No, actually, we can do kula kula show. Oh. Where all of us sit on round table and we just eat and talk. Let's do one. It's going to be fire. It will be fire. Yes. Your kids will light up my kids. <laughs> <laughs> what I was is that, <gasps> that they use the bad word. Yeah, no, no yeah, okay. Yeah. Then my kids won't use the bad words. I'm the one who uses the bad words. Yeah. But they're not no, bad. Just say no, that fuck. Come on. <laughs> it's a fucking good show. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's the end of this fucking. Okay, <laughs> this. <laughs> the fucking session is over. Yes, thank you for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Where we badisha kipindi yangu kwa therapy. Ugozile, have you considered? Yeah.